Hello, let's talk about maps. So looking up associated data is something that we ask computers to do all the time. You click on a book on the library uh, catalog web page and it tells you which shelf to find it on. So the location in that book is associated with the book, say the, the title of the book. You scan your one card, it sales, and a computer accesses your associated Schiller's account. And any kind of directory or contact list is going to associate uh, names with contact information. So these sort of associations and the ability to, given one piece of this information, to look up the associated piece of information is ubiquitous uh, in terms of how computers are used. So one such use for computers that I am proud to announce today is my campaign to be governor of Minnesota. Bauer for Minnesota. And I will be running on a robust platform of efficient data structures for all. And as part of this campaign, I will need a list of thousands or tens of thousands or millions of volunteers to spread my big O message. And so this week, we're going to learn about an efficient data structure to deal with this situation. And today, in today's lesson, we'll cover the map abstract data type and make a first attempt at implementing it using the techniques and data structures that we've studied so far. So that brings me to the learning goals for this lesson. One, uh, you will be able to use a map-like data structure to store key value pairs. And you'll be able to explain why the data structures we've studied so far can't provide an efficient map implementation. So when choosing a data structure, it's important as a first step to think about what operations you will need. So for my uh, epic list of campaign volunteers, I'm going to need the following thing. I'm going to need a way to add a volunteer uh, to, this, to this database. I'm going to need to a way to check if a volunteer has already been added to this, to this list. I'm going to need a way to I'm going to need a way to look up volunteer con contact info, and perhaps in this uh, in this database of volunteers, uh, I'm going to associate the volunteer's name with some object that's going to contain a bunch of information about them, say a phone number, email, town they live in, uh, etc. And uh, so I'm going to want a way to add this sort of name and associated contact data, a way to check if a particular volunteer's name has already been added, to look up the contact info if for a specific volunteer, and because the volunteers for my campaign might always be changing, I might need a way to remove a volunteer from my list. And these sort of operations, uh, adding some, checking if there's already an entry, looking up the associated data, and uh, removing an entry are very com common operations with dealing with this kind of associated data. And in computer science, we often call uh, this associated data, like uh, volunteer name and volunteer contact info, key value pairs, where specifically key would be a name in this case, and value the contact info. And you can think of this key like an index of an array. It's how we look up the value that we've stored. And like array indexes, these keys must be unique.
And you can think about how it would be a problem if an array had different locations that were, say, both index zero, because then when you try to access the value at index zero, it, the system wouldn't know which value you were trying to retrieve if there were, say, multiple index zeros. And likewise, each of our keys has to be unique because otherwise when we go to look up the associated data with a name, we don't know kind of which associated value to retrieve if there are multiple keys uh, that are identical. So uh, when we're dealing with key value pairs, our keys will need to be unique. You might say that, well, making all these names be unique might cramp the style of my volunteer list, but as, say, Carlton does with usernames, you can always add, say, numbers to the end or some other di differentiating uh, uh, thing to make them all unique. All right, so let's uh, take these operations here and turn them into kind of the formal operations for an abstract data type. So uh, we're going to define the map abstract data type. So like a stack or a queue, a map is going to define a set of operations and their sort of externally visible behavior but not specify anything about the internal implementation. So we're going to have a put method that takes a key and a value and returns a value. Now, this k and this v are generic placeholders for some specific type that our keys are and some specific type that our values are. And uh, the syntax for this is going to use angle brackets like the kind of other generic syntax that we've seen, but in this case we'll fill in two different types, one for the keys and one for the values, and our implementation of the map ADT will have these two kind of generic placeholders uh, that we use with the methods. So what does this put method do? Well, it uh, adds the key value pair, key and value, uh, to our map. And uh, because our keys are unique, if a key already exists, has already been added to our map, we're actually going to replace the value currently associated with it with this new value. So if there's already this key, we'll replace it and we'll return the old value that was associated with that key or null if there wasn't an old value associated with it. And that's why we have a return type of V. We also will have a, I said I need to be able to check if a volunteer is already in my list. And so we'll have a contains operation that takes a key and returns true or false, and if that key is present uh, in my map, we will have a get method which takes a key and returns the value that's associated with that key. And if that key is not present in, in the map, uh, that violates a precondition of git. So uh, I will throw an exception in that case. And finally, we'll have remove 
which will remove a key from a map and return the value associated with it. And like Git, it will assume that the key is currently present in the map. And so these four operations, put, contains, git, remove, are uh, what makes up the map abstract data type. Uh, as with uh, at least the Q abstract data type that we saw earlier, uh, map is also an interface in Java, and there are different classes that Java provides that implement that interface. Uh, and as you might expect, that interface has uh, many more methods than just these four, but these are the four uh, that we're going to focus on to kind of understand the fundamentals of the map abstract data type. All right, so let's see how we might use the map abstract data type. And the scenario that we'll take a look at is when we're processing a file of volunteer information and, and entering it into, into a map so that we can store the associations between names and contact info. And we're going to process this data from a file, and in particular, a comma separated value or CSV file. And this is just a file where each line is uh, a kind of data entry. And then there are different uh, fields within this data, and they're separated by commas, hence the name comma separated values. And so this is a volunteers.csv that stores five different volunteers information. Make this a little bigger, actually. And the fields here are name, Abe Lincoln, uh, phone number, all ones, email, abe at carlton.edu, and town uh, that the volunteer lives in, in this case, Northfield. And there's also Ilhan Omar, Cleopatra, Julius Caesar, and Stevie P, uh, all ready to volunteer for my campaign. And so I've gone ahead and created a volunteer class to store all this information inside one object. And it has four private fields, all strings for name, phone, email, and town. It has a constructor that takes this information, and then it has getters and setters, such as get town, set town, get email, set email, uh, for each of these four fields. So then I have process volunteers.java, which just has a main method, and it creates a instance of a class called list map, which we're going to implement shortly. But as I mentioned, uh, when we create a map, we're going to fill in the the types for both the keys and the values. That's this K and B that are placeholders in these methods that I, I've written here. So for this particular map, volunteers, the keys, all these capital Ks, will be filled in with string. That's going to be the name. And all the Bs, capital Bs here, will be filled in with the type volunteer. So this map is going to associate names with volunteer objects, that class that I was just talking about that holds name, phone, email, and town. And in this main method, I create my list map of volunteers. I use the algs for in object to open a file. And then while it has the next line, I read in the file, I read in the line rather. I split up the line by commas because I have comma separated values. And then I use the put method on my map to uh, put the name, the first thing in my, uh, in each of my lines in my CSV, the first thing is the name. So I say uh, fields index zero, and then I create a new volunteer object that takes the name, the phone number, the email, and the town fields index three. And then at the end, I'll print out volunteers. However, haven't actually implemented list map yet, uh, but wanted to kind of frame it with how would we actually use a map? We would say read in data and then uh, use put to store that data in our map. So before we can implement list map, there's actually another class that I want to implement first, and that is we want some object that actually associates two different pieces of data. We have these key value pairs, but nothing that Java provides represents a pair of 
values. You may be used to tuples from Python. Python has kind of a built-in capacity to uh, create a, a tuple and uh, an immutable sequence of uh, arbitrary values, but Java has no such such thing. So we're going to need to implement something to represent a key value pair ourselves, and that's going to be an association, uh, the association class. And uh, this is just going to store a key of type K and a value of type V. We're going to make a constructor that takes in a key and a value and then initializes the private fields to those parameters. And then we're just going to create a couple getters. Uh, get key, which returns the key, and get value, which returns the value. And so this is a simple little class that uh, allows us to represent a key value pair to associated pieces of data. And I've made it generic so that we can fill in a particular uh, type for K and a particular type for V uh, when we actually create an association. So with this in place, we can actually try and our first implementation of the map ADT. Uh, and I'm going to call this one uh, list map because the best thing that we've seen so far for storing a bunch of a bunch of data that we might be kind of removing and, and adding to at various points is going to be a uh, linked list that's going to hold uh, associations, and those associations will have type uh, will associate types K and V. Uh, that are the same as whatever the types we've created the list map uh, to hold. And this uh, is going to be a private, uh, a private field, and I'll call it uh, items. And I'll go ahead and import the linked list from Java. And so this might look a little confusing, uh, but we can do this sort of nested uh, parameterization in Java where we say this linked list hold associations and those association objects hold things of type uh, K keys and type V values and this K and V are coming from this list map class itself so we're able to say as we did in our main method give me a list map that maps strings to volunteers and our internal implementation will have a linked list of associations that hold string keys and volunteer values. So next up, when we're implementing an object, we typically want to do uh, the constructor. So a list map constructor, it's not going to take any arguments, and we're just going to uh, create a new empty uh, linked list for our internal list of items. And now let's implement the method of our ADT. Namely, we're going to have public the put that takes a key and a value. We're going to have a public boolean contains takes a key. Public method that returns a value called git that takes a key, returns the associated value, and finally a uh, public method that returns a value called remove takes a key and will remove that key from our map. So for put, we might be tempted to simply do items to add an association, construct a new association, that uh, takes a key, uh, that takes the key and the value, and add that to our list, and have that be done. But you'll see that my put method is underlined in red. That's because I've declared it to return something, in this case, something of type V, uh, but there's no return statement. So Java is, is saying that's 
Uh, that, that doesn't work out. It can't, this method says it returns something, but your current implementation uh, doesn't. So we actually can't do something as nice and simple as just add the new association to the end of our list because this needs to replace the existing entry for that key if one exists. So first we're going to have to uh, find the existing entry for key if it exists. And to do this, uh, I think it's going to be easiest to use a for each loop where we loop over our associations in our internal list of items. So then inside this loop, we can say if the association that we're currently on in our, in our iteration over those, uh, if its key equals the key that we're trying to insert, if those are equal, we just need to do two things. First, we need to remove our uh, the association um, from our list of items. And then we're going to add the new one with our new uh, key value pair. And if we found a matching one, we've removed it and we've added a new one. That's all our put method needs to do. And we can return the value of the old association that we just removed, which is what put returns in this case. If we make it through this whole loop, then we never found a, an equivalent key, which means that we just can add the new one and we return null because there was no previous value associated with this key. So I'll leave a comment to that effect. No existing key, add new one and return null. So this is our complete put method. And uh, as we'll turn to later, this involves a loop over the entire list of associations that we're currently storing in this map. So let's move on to contains. Uh, this is going to return true if a, if a key is already present in our map and false otherwise. And if we are going to check if our key is in our list, we've talked about ways of searching a list. And we know binary search works with sorted data, but our list of items, we're just adding to the end of it. We're not sorting it. So we're left to linear search. And linear search is going to be uh, searching through each uh, association in our list um, of map entries uh, and saying if our association's key equals the key we're looking for. And I have, at this point, there are alarm bells ringing in my head because I am writing exactly the code that I just wrote for another method. And when this happens, that should immediately make you think, ah, I should create a helper method that does what this code is doing so I don't have to repeat it in multiple places. And that's going to be kind of better design of this class. So what I'm going to do is make a uh, private helper method that returns an association of key and value and I'll call it find key and it's going to take a key and then I will just copy over the loop that I already wrote except instead of removing it if I find it I'll if I find something with a matching key I'll just return the association so this find key is a um, private helper method is going to find the association uh, that has this key if it exists. Otherwise, it will just return null. And now I can use this find key method in both my put, my contains, and in fact, as we'll see in uh, all of the methods, 
uh, in this class. And so this is a nice way to avoid just copy pasting the same code uh, a bunch of different places. So now instead of this loop, I can say association key value equals find key of my key. So this is going to find the association. Um, so I need to give it a name. Uh, let's just say uh, A. Uh, and if A is not null, so if I in fact found a matching association, then I want to remove it, still add my new one, and then return its value. Otherwise, if A is null, we didn't find an existing one, and we just add the new one and return null. All right, now we can write contains uh, using our find key method. Uh, and if we say find key of key, we know this is going to return null if key isn't there. So we might say find key does not equal null. That indicates that we have found a matching key and that our map does contain this key. And that's exactly what this contain, methods, contain method is returning. So we can just directly return find key does not equal null because find key does not equal null will be true if we successfully find the key and will be false if it did return null and we didn't find it. And that's exactly what this contain method should do. Now we have get. This is also easy to write with this find key method. We first will have our association of our key value pair and again, I'll just call it A, and we'll find the key. And if A is null, if we didn't find the key, we're going to throw a new no uh, such element exception, uh, since you tried to get a key that didn't uh, that didn't exist in our map. But assuming that we didn't throw this exception, we can just return the value uh, associated with that key, and remove, we will do almost the same thing as get. We will find the association. If it's null, you can't remove a key that isn't there and we'll throw an exception. Otherwise, we'll have our list remove that association and then return the value associated with it. And with this, our list map implementation is done. We have our four abstract data type elements. We can put uh, key value pairs in. We can check if a key is there. We can get the value associated with the key. We can remove a key. And now that I have finished my list map implementation and off screen have written a two string method for my list map uh, so that I can print, print it out at the end, which uh, you can see by looking at the, the code posted with the lesson. I can see that when I run the when I run this code, it reads in the file and then prints out the map that is built up, which we can see is a key associated with this volunteer object, which also has a two string method that prints out the name, the phone, the email, and the town that the volunteer lives in. So as a last step, let's analyze the efficiency of our list map. So as I said, it would become important that each of our methods is actually going to need to find an association with a particular key. And if we look at all of our, all of four of our, our methods here, all call find key. And if you remember, we uh, model the uh, efficiency of a function call by the number of operations that the code inside that function will do. And we can look at find key. It has a loop over all the things in our list items and kind of checks the key. And uh, that's it. 
And if this find key method loops over all the things and items, well then the worst case, uh, the big O running time for that is going to be big O of n, right? It's a linear operation. We're looping over everything in our list once. And that means that all of our methods here, our put, our contains, our get, our remove, are all going to be big O of n because they all use find key to find uh, the key that, that is already in the list uh, or find that it's not in the list. And uh, this is really unfortunate because I am hoping to have a campaign for governor with uh, uncountable hordes of volunteers and a data structure which every operation is big O of n uh, is really gonna, gonna gum up the works there. And so we're going to see in Wednesdays and Fridays topic a way to implement this map ADT that provides constant time for all of these methods of the map abstract data type. So look forward to that and look, I look forward to your questions.